Okay, so the only question from the sample final that I wanted to make a quick video for was this one, which is about determining what tests to use for different situations. So I'm gonna first just break down when we should be using each of these types of tests. So remember when we're talking about means, that means that we have quantitative data. That's the first thing you need to pay attention to. Uh, all this stuff for proportions. This will be when we have categorical data, specifically categorical data that we can say something is our yes, something is what we're interested in counting up, right? Because there's an underlying binomial under there. So that's the first thing we need to read, read through is decide, okay, what are we count? What, what are we actually looking at at the end? What's our outcome variable, right? Um, and then is that variable quantitative or is it categorical? And that'll let us know where we are to start with. The next thing we need to do is really determine if we're in this set or this set, right? Whether we have one group or two groups. And that's, that's pretty straightforward. This whole set here is one group, whereas here we're dealing with two groups. The only real exception to that is our paired means, right? This is actually a one group. The single group will have two observations though. So in this one, you'll actually have two observations for each member of that group. So this was like our before and after studies. So you'd have a pretest and a post-test and then that's the only thing we're looking at. So that's most of keeping this stuff apart. The last piece is our Z's versus T's for A versus B. And this is all about whether we have a sigma or we have S or we don't have sigma, right? So we've seen that before, that was part seven. So now that we've kind of got a breakdown of when we're gonna use what, we'll read through these questions and see what's appropriate. First question looks like we are going to assess knowledge of frog anatomy using a test. We wanna compare the effectiveness of a program where they physically dissect frogs with the effectiveness of a different program where they use computer software to simulate dissecting a frog. Um, after competing one of the two programs, students will be giving a post-test to assess their knowledge of frog anatomy. Teacher will then analyze the change in test scores. So post-test minus pre-test. So changes in the test scores is the outcome, right? That's the thing she actually wants to analyze. So already we're thinking change in test score, that's quantitative. We're going to have a number of points of difference, right? So we know our outcome is quantitative. I feel like quant it, no, that's right. It seems like a lot of T's. Um, so already we can get rid of the two proportion uh, test examples. Now, because there are two different programs that we are comparing, this might have seemed like a t-test for differences because we were doing post minus pre, but we have two programs that we have to compare that doing the physical dissection versus doing the computer simulation. So we're dealing with two groups and quantitative there's no way to pair these. It's not like we had students paired up based on their ability in the class or any pairing mechanism. So this answer is D. All right, next one. We have one of two fire stations in town. So we already kind of got this, hmm, maybe there's our two groups again. Uh, response to calls in the northern half, the, uh, response, response to calls in the northern half, the other response to calls in the southern half. One of the town council members believes that the two fire stations have different mean response times. All right, so we can already, we've already been told this is a mean question. And we think that the two groups are different. This one should be easy, straightforward. Either the mean for the people dealing with the northern half is the same as the mean for the southern half, or they are different as he suspects. So easy enough, no reason to pair these. We definitely have two groups. I don't even need to keep reading on. This is also D. Okay, so if you haven't already, I would say pause. Now that you got an idea of when we're using what, try the rest of these on your own and see how you do. Um, and then once you're finished, if you can either check the PDF on Blackboard or you can continue on with the video, especially if there's one that you got wrong. All right, so the next one, it's got a lot of words <laughs> on it, um, but it looks like we're comparing two things, right? We wanna talk about strand, uh, trust competitions plus standard mouth to mouth. Um, however, some people believe that 
uh, chest compressions alone would be a more effective approach. So we're comparing two things. So we already have our two groups. Um, in the 1990s, a study was conducted in which 150, 150, oh my gosh, 518 cases were randomly assigned to treatments. So here we can see again those two groups. Uh, 278 to the chest compressions with the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and 240 to chest compressions alone. A total of 64 patients survived the heart attack, 29 receiving CC plus MMR, and 35 in the group receiving CC alone. So we need to decide what the heck our outcome is. What were we measuring at the end of this? What were they interested in? And this was surviving the heart attack, which is a categorical variable, right? A yes, no variable. In fact, they gave us our X and our N, right? So we have all these values, which means that we're doing F, our two proportion tests. There's nothing to take averages of here. We're just looking at did they survive the heart attack, yes or no. All right, continuing on. A consumer organization was concerned that an automobile manufacturer was misleading customers by overstating the average fuel efficiency. We've got the word average in here, so we've got, you know, down, down to four choices. Um, it was advertised to get to, uh, 27 miles per gallon to investigate. They selected a random sample of 10 cars of that model. Each car was ran uh, randomly assigned to a different driver. Each car was driven for 5,000 miles, and the total fuel consumption uh, was used to compute NPG. So we already know we're dealing with an average. It appears we only have one group, right? We're just looking at this one model of car. So now we're going between A and B, either our Z test or our T test. And the only way we can do a Z test is if we know the true standard deviation, which was not given to us. So the only possible option for this one is B, that we're doing a T test for means, just looking at is the mean, I guess, uh, equal to 27 and we think they're overstating it so we want to prove that it's actually less than 27 miles per gallon so that's what we're looking for um uh the group of 300 housewives is interviewed to determine if there's a preference for one of two detergents detergent a was favored by this many housewives the others favored detergent b this is a question where i feel like a lot of people are going to choose a two sample test but we don't have two groups right we have one outcome, which is, do you like A or do you like B? So our outcome is their preference, which is categorical, right? And the two detergents are not groups. It's not like we're comparing the two detergents. We're just saying how to house, which ones do housewives prefer? So the housewives are the groups. There is a group, so we're just dealing with a one sample test. And preference, since it's categorical, here we're just looking at a one prop C test. So we're going to say... I don't know, maybe that the preference for the detergent A, it, it doesn't matter that the preference is 50-50, right? That there isn't one over the other. Uh, and then our alternative might be something else about P. Maybe they're not the same. Maybe we think A is going to be more likely, whatever it might be there. All right, we continue on. A uh, new process for copper mining is adopted. It must produce at least 30 tons of ore per day. And we have a five-day trial with the following results. So amount of ore produced looks to be uh, quantitative. So we got that immediately, which means we're doing one of the tests for means. And it doesn't look like we have two samples, right? We just have one sample with this new process. So, uh, and no sigma given. So this must be another t-test. Probably comparing uh, is the mean at least 50 versus is it less than 50. And remember, at least has the greater than or equal to, which has to go into our null. All right, two sets of high school students, each were taught algebra by two methods. Okay, looking like we're gonna be dealing with a two, te uh, two sample test. The experimental group used programmed learning and no formal lectures. The control group were given formal lectures by a teacher. All right, so program learning versus formal lectures. Got two groups. The end of the experiment, both groups were giving a test and the number of students scoring above 85% was recorded. So here, the test score itself would have been quantitative, but it doesn't look like we're interested in the average of the two groups. Looks like we're interested in the percent of students scoring above, a, uh, above an 85. So since we are interested in that, we're looking for a categorical variable, right? Yes or no, did they score above or did they not? 
So our hypotheses here would be the proportion in the experimental group is the same as the proportion in the control group, and then our alternative, they're somehow different. The lectures are the same as this programmed learning thing, uh, which gives us F. I'm just trying to remember all the, <laughs> the letters that are up there. Okay, last one on this page. Two, 10 sets of identical twins wanting to learn French are divided into two groups, each group containing one twin pair. Okay. One of each of the twin pair. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, group one was flown to France. So they lived for one month. The other was enrolled in an intensive French course at a local university. So sort of an immersive program, study abroad versus um, just taking a course at the university. At the end of one month, all subjects were given a standard French language exam. So we've got our two groups. We've got a treatment and a control, essentially normal uh, university class versus living in France. And the standard French exam is our outcome, which is quantitative, right? We're going to have a nice score for that. So we're probably looking for living in France is the same thing as taking the university course. Except for we have these twins. So we have a way to pair these up. So we're actually going to be looking at the average difference. Is the difference zero? Because we'll be able to take the twin in France minus the twin in the university and see what an improvement there might have been from living in France. So this one, since we have a pairing mechanism, the fact that the twins were each split up and one went to France and one stayed back, this gives us our first paired test of the day. All right, last two. Um, here looks like we are testing a hypothesis that mean is equal to some value. One sample, we're not comparing a mean to something else. And we have a sigma, so this is our z-test. Easy peasy, we got an average, we got a sigma, life is good. Uh, next one, we have a claim that at most 5% of the goods are defective. Uh, and then it looks like we have one sample of 200 items. So we have our P that we're testing. He says at most it's 5%. We probably want to see if it's greater than 5%. And then we have our N and our X. So we are just dealing with a, sorry, forgetting my letters, a one sample uh, proportion Z test. So hopefully that helps out a little bit with that type of question.